Hey everyone, in this part, we're going to show you how to configure Visual Studio on your debugger VM and then push your build binary onto the target VM automatically. For that, we're going to use SSH configure on the target VM. Okay, let's get started. So we provide a Visual Studio Labs uh, archive that you can extract to get basically the labs to generate the Visual Studio solution. And the idea is we're not going to provide the actual solution and project already. We use CMake. To generate them so the first time you're gonna actually build the solution you're gonna actually run a build bat script and this will generate the solution and the project for you the first time you do it you can use build.bat hello for quick testing after that you're gonna have a build directory generated with a solution to that so for all the future generation or all the future build of your battery you can just use the solution on the general visual studio method to build the project so on the target VM side, we want to make sure SSH is enabled. We should have configured it, but if you reproduce your VM, you may have to rerun the SSH service. This is because Visual Studio will be configured to automatically push the build binary onto the target VM over SSH. So to do that, we invoke an external batch script called scp.bat and this requires some environment variables like the IP address where to push the binary which will be the target VM IP and the users to connect to the Windows subsystem SSH. It also requires a putty profile on that debugger VM that need to be configured and that need to have the IP address as well as the, the information like the SSH certificate to connect to the target VM. We'll show you how to configure that in a second. You want to make sure as well that the actual target VM is not on a breakpoint stuck into a debugger or on a get car for the actual binary you're trying to push to make sure you are able to actually write that file on the target VM. This is the Visual Studio environment where you can see on the right the different parts, so part zero and the hello world folder. And then we have the hello world lab and the hello world.c file. On the left side, you can see that there is uh, the actual lab instructions. If you look for lab, lab to do, you will see the different things you have to do for the lab. At the bottom, you see that we have actually built the project and what happened in the hello world lab that exe was actually compiled. And after that, you see the SCP invocation that actually pushed the file onto the remote target VM. So this is the script that is invoked the first time to set up the environment variables. So we can see the remote IP for the the target VM, we see the user for SSH and the remote path in the WSL context to actually write that file on the desktop. In order for the copy of SSH to work, it's going to rely on a private key being configured directly on the debugger VM. So you don't have to input the password each time you build and push a binary onto the target VM. So for that to work, we rely on a patchy profile. We need to create a specific session on that profile with the IP address matching the target VM for the actual name of the session. And we'll show you later but we need also to provide the actual private key as well as the user of that SSH session. So this is basically the three things you need to do. On the left, we see the host name, which is the IP address we connect to and the port 22, but also the save session for that needs to match the IP address for the name for that to work. In the middle, you see the auto login username is set to user. And on the right, we see in the SSH auth, we configured the path to the private key for authentication. So the way to test that you have your environment work Working is to build the project on the debugger VM using the build script and it should build the binary automatically and push it onto the target VM desktop. Then you can go to the, your target VM and actually run the binary you've just pushed and built. Okay, so we have our target VM and our debugger VM. So on the debugger VM, you should have pushed the Visual Studio Labs archive that we're going to extract. You can see it has an actual folder in it, so we're just going to extract it here. And in that directory, you'll see a build folder that is empty and the actual files with the build.bat that's going to use CMake. So we go into desktop tools, Visual Studio Labs, and now we're going to build, we're going to invoke build.bat with hello. As you can see, what happened is that he tried to set the environment variables using the env.bat script. And then it built the actual hello 
project. And then after it created the hello world project, it actually tried to push the file to that IP address. So the IP address in your case may be different, so it's going to fail. And also the problem is we don't have any putty profile at the moment, so it's not able to do so. So we're just going to close that. So now you should have inside the build directory the actual solution that you can start, and we can build everything from that solution now. So you can see the different parts of the different labs. In this case, we only have one lab, hello world.c. And so we know that this will invoke two scripts. So in Visual Studio Labs scripts, we're going to have m.bat and scp.bat. So m.bat will be setting the environment variable. So you need that IP address to match the target VM. So here we have the target VM IP 92131, and this needs to match here to be able to push the battery from the debugger VM to the target VM. This needs to be here as well. So scp.bat will assume m.bat has been executed and will rely on the actual environment variables. And then it will use putty to scp to copy the build binaries over SSH. So once we have done that, we need to start putty. And we need to define an actual SSH profile. So we need the host name to be the IP address. Then we need to go into data and set the user to user. And then in SSH auth, we need to select the private key for authentication. It should be into, into SSH config, target vm.ppk. Once you've done that, you go back to session and you should save the session with the same name at the actual IP address and click save. Now we try to open connection just to confirm it works. So as you can see, it doesn't work. So if we go back to the target VM, or we do sudo service ssh start. Now we have started our ssh service. We try again. Now it's working. It's asking for verification. We accept. And now we are into our WSL environment. So we know putty profile works now. Oh, great. We have our putty profile working. And because the m.bat file is only taken into account during the build phase using the build.bat script, as you can see here, we basically need to rerun build.bat in order to take into account our modified IP address. So we're just going to execute build.bat hello again. We can see it's again re resetting the environment variable, and this time it successfully pushed the binary onto the target VM. We can see the address here. So if in your case, you have the wrong address that doesn't correspond to your target VM, you need to fix the m.bat file, make sure it matches the putty profile, and then restart the build.bat hello command. So now, if we go back here and build our actual project, You see that it successfully pushed the files onto the desktop. So we can see Hello World Lab is here. And we can run it. So now let's say we want to modify our binary to say Hello OST2. And then we rebuild it. And then when we go to our target VM and we rerun it, we can see we quickly 
were able to test it. Okay, thanks for watching.